doing a live stream in rural Nigeria and someone in um, Seattle, USA could be listen, listening to that and you know stream chats directly to that, that person which as far as I'm aware is not super easy to do right now right mm-hmm. so it's just the it's just this idea of it bringing people like s- closer together you know on on the things that they care about and the things that they're interested in in the most so that's definitely that's definitely something that's super interesting bringing content creators closer to their supporters what's up everyone welcome to another episode of changing the tide i got connor Ocus today he joins me from london he is at square crypto and has just been doing some awesome stuff with bitcoin lightning design in fact his podcast series from last year advancing bitcoin features some square crypto grantees and it's it's a must listen it it really is something that helps you dive into the people who are trying to make bitcoin user experience something that will onboard the next several billion people and he also is now working on a project called hello bitcoin and that's on youtube or you can go to the uh to their website which i'm sure he'll plug away Uh, but it's hellobitco.in and they have four episodes out now it's an incredible series of why bitcoin what it is and how it works and there's more coming but uh that's super exciting i'm excited to dive in hear his story learn more so let's give it a whirl connor welcome to the show hey man thanks for having me yeah i'm very excited hey you put out a tweet the other day and i just thought it was very interesting because this podcast is all about people who are in on in bitcoin on lightning and how that's bringing greater freedom and prosperity to the world and you wrote a little something about how they cheated our um generation out of out of real estate but we found the cheat code (laughs) tell me a little bit about that Yeah, um, it, it, I didn't expect it to blow up for one. It was kind of like just a throwaway tweet that I was that I, that I put out in like bed just before I went to bed. So I didn't <laughs> expect it to pop off so much. But I don't know. I mean, it comes out of a of a, a frustration that I guess I'm my generation, a lot of my friends are going through. I grew up in, in London, East London specifically. And as I've got older, what I'm starting to see is a lot of my friends have been, you know, unable to attain, you know, housing in areas that they grew up in. And these are people who have well-established jobs, um, are on good salaries, oftentimes have two salaries in relationships and whatnot, and um, are unable to obtain that. And we know being as being Bitcoiners that part of the root cause of that is the monetary system um, unnecessary inflation um, and so for me it was just this kind of recognition that like okay well one of the necessi- necessities in life housing is kind of becoming harder and harder to obtain it's one of those things that you know everyone needs and when you do have it it brings a level of peace of mind and um as it stands like the current system doesn't seem to be changing in a direction that makes obtaining something like that a bit more easier or a bit more favorable and so the discovery or the invention of bitcoin is something that allows us i guess to to fight against that and those of us who choose to work hard and kind of um produce value in the communities and the societies we live in now have an opportunity to store our wealth and store our value in a in a digital commodity if you will or digital asset that is kind of has a fixed supply no no more than 21 million all that good stuff and so a, a system that was designed to favor a certain portion of society and a game, if you will, that was set up to to be at the advantage of certain people in society. Um, I didn't think the, the creators of that system quite knew that something like this would, would emerge, hence why I kind of called it a cheat code, because this, the game is not designed for a certain part of society to kind of flourish. And so Bitcoin kind of gives that, us that opportunity to do that. The money printing game has left a whole lot of people behind. 
huh <laughs> yeah exactly yeah yeah we you know the whole the whole cantillionaire you know, situation those closest to the money printer you know benefit the most and so um that's kind of like a big a big cause i guess of, of inequality in some of the societies especially in the west and even beyond so yeah we we've seen that too my wife grew up in the seattle washington area and specifically nearby where microsoft is and uh it it is for all intents and purposes like we can't afford anything in that area you know um yeah. uh, hey with bitcoin maybe very soon but uh <laughs> so, yeah exactly yeah so i resonated with that tweet definitely so yeah well, hey, let's talk about, you, you talked about working hard. You've been working hard in the Bitcoin space here for a little bit. Um, you have done a podcast series called Advancing Bitcoin, which I followed and uh, loved. Thank you. Yeah, you got it. I think that was related a bit with your work at Square Crypto. Yeah. And then you also have a new series uh, that you're working on uh, with a couple other people called Hello Bitcoin. Yeah. So how about this, Connor? When did you, when did Bitcoin uh, just make sense to you? Yeah, so, so my background is um, as a software engineer. Um, so the last kind of four or five years I've spent working as a software engineer at small startups and, and big corporations as well. And um, I kind of got into it just pretty much in 2017 um through the investment side of things like you know just being in the tech space and uh hearing rumors and being introduced to it by colleagues in my team um so i initially came through to to, to for number go up and to make money but having i guess the technological background allowed me to try and dive a bit deeper into understanding like what this is all about and so for me um someone who was very influential in my learning was Andreas Antonopoulos. Like I sat down, read Master of Bitcoin, pretty much watched like all of his videos. Um, I was watching Alex Gladstein's, uh, Gladstein's interview on Lex Friedman and he referred to Andreas as the GOAT. And uh, I don't think he's far off that. I think he's, he's definitely in my top three GOATs for sure. Mine too. And uh, <laughs> yeah, for sure, man. And so, yeah, naturally just kind of go down the rabbit hole when you, you realize what is underpinning this thing, realize there's a lot of substance behind it. And so um, for me, when it was the kind of um, idea of Bitcoin being like the internet of money that really opened up my eyes, uh, Islamic Andreas talks about a lot. Um, I just love the comparison of, of Bitcoin to the internet and how like the internet was very much a democratization of information and communication and Bitcoin being the kind of democratization of value. So for me, that was like, oh, wow, if, if we have we have the internet and it's provided all of this opportunity to people and people were able to become educated in scenarios perhaps where they wouldn't have otherwise been, what does that mean for being able to transfer value in areas where people might not have been able to as well. So that was the kind of kind of thing that really resonated the most with me, you know, so. Yeah, yeah. Uh, opening access in a lot of areas that don't have access to uh, something where they can more easily trade and and then from that trade, you know, gain value and store it easily. Yeah, because I was a 2017 class of 2017 Bitcoiner as well, and Andreas was yeah. massively influential. So yeah, and I think at that time as well, it was I wasn't too familiar with actually the store of value proposition. To be honest with you, for, I think that for me that came a little bit later after reading like the Bitcoin Standard and understanding why like limited supplies was important. It was initially it was this kind of you, you want to see people become their best selves and if f having or a lack of financial infrastructure and services is what the barrier is to someone becoming their best self it doesn't you know it naturally just doesn't feel quite right like why should someone not be able to reach their potential because of some arbitrary system that says you can't participate you know so 
as someone who wants to see cool things in the world and people flourish, it's like, yeah, man, that makes that makes a lot of sense, you know? Yeah. Now, you're a software engineer. I also have noticed in a lot of your videos, tweets, that sort of thing, you're very interested in the design side of things that would make this more accessible to your average everyday user. Where did that come in to play? Yeah, so as a, as a software engineer, I was predominantly working on like front end applications, mobile applications, web apps, these type of things. And uh, after going through down the rabbit hole of, of learning about Bitcoin, I ultimately wanted to find a way to work in the space full time. So as of summer of 2020, yeah, time flies, man, summer of 2020, um, I had an opportunity to basically work on Bitcoin full, full time via a Square Crypto grant. And we can talk a little bit about that, like what that entails a, a bit later, but basically um, I was given a grant to work on, on Bitcoin full time. Um, and one of the projects that I was started working on was something called the Bitcoin design community. Um, and this is a community of product designers, um, UX, uh, UI, people focused on improvement in the UX and UI of Bitcoin, artists, creatives, um, animators, different types of people were, that probably sit on more of the creative side of, of Bitcoin. Um, and so it helped kind of build up that community to some degree. Um, one of the community's projects is called the Bitcoin Design Guide. Um, you can visit it at bitcoin.design. Um, and this is basically uh, a guide and a set of principles that uh, an engineer or a product team um, can use to you know build out bitcoin wallets and other types of bitcoin products um, without necessarily having to start from scratch so we provide like guidance on how to do for example private key management for specific scenarios or how to um, onboard new users um, how to design for lightning based wallets this type of thing um so it gives bitcoin developers bitcoin teams a foundation from which to start a project from ultimately um and then the, at the moment the slack channel where most of the communication for the community happens we have about close to 2000 um designers and and people who are enthusiastic about design in that in that space so it's definitely a a growing space and it's and it's a space that's very much needed because i'm sure as you're very much aware that the ux around bitcoin is still a bit rough and if we wanted to get to to mass adoption then we're gonna have to improve it greatly um and so yeah i, I did the the advance in bitcoin podcast came out of that because i wanted to um introduce the people who were in that space um kind of the ideas they had around the UX and, and the challenges around Bitcoin. Um, and so everything from like user research to privacy, how to design well for privacy for an average user um, and what the Bitcoin design guide entails, like a whole host of different things. So that's where like the Advancing Bitcoin podcast came out of really. Um, and then, yeah, the Hello Bitcoin stuff came 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 slightly later. We can, we can also talk about that as well. Yeah. Uh, going back real quick to the Bitcoin design guide um, and community, one of the coolest things to see was actually watching um, uh, one of your guests. I think it was episode three on advancing Bitcoin, Patricia Esteval, who mm -hmm. uh, it was doing user research, like you mentioned. And I remember reading the Square Crypto Twitter uh, feed when she got her grant and then months later i think it was just a couple months ago when all of that research got published and it was amazing to see yeah. from start to finish the the grant being given the research done and everything published so yeah it's amazing no, she's amazing she's she's been in the space for for some time and she's done some good research around lightning i think that the thing i love the most about her work is it it does bring in the kind of personalized um personas around people who are actually using bitcoin um i think some of us who have you know been in the space for a while we can sometimes lose a sense of what it's like 
for people in specific scenarios or specific region to experience Bitcoin and why they might use it and and what are the challenges that they face, you know. So it does help to bring things into a lot more context outside of Bitcoin Twitter, outside of the conferences, outside of all of this like fun stuff. But there, there is still a, a, a reality that we need to surface and, and help people understand when they're building Bitcoin wallets and, and products. So It feels like she brought that kind of standard software practice of, the, you know, here are the personas of user, you know, at least yeah. buckets. And yeah, uh, exactly. Yeah. OK, so as far as Square Crypto itself and, and your role there, did you also get a grant? Did I hear that right? Yeah, so I, I got a grant, um, initially a six months grant. Um, so I, I, like I said, I was working closely in the Bitcoin design community. So I, I helped write the, um, the the start of the onboarding section for the Bitcoin design guide. I was very much focused on first time users. Um, what does it look like for new users who are um, backing up private keys for the first time? Um, is that something that's necessary for a first time user? If it is, how so? Like, do we back up um, private keys to a cloud for first time use and for low value transactions? Do we need them to write down their things? Like all these considerations for different use cases, you know, um, getting to know your users as well. Like who are you actually building for? Um, what information do the new users need up front to have a successful experience depending on what they're trying to achieve? Um, so I helped do that. I also help contribute to a, a development library or a, a software development kit called Photon, um, which is designed to allow uh, a Bitcoin wallet to back up a mnemonic seed or a private key to the cloud. Um, either like Google Drive or um, iCloud. You might see this in some wallet implementations such as Breeze and Phoenix, I think, do this. Um, so it's a... It's a far superior onboarding experience than having to write down 24 or 12 words especially when you don't have any bitcoin yet right so um wrote wrote the google kind of implementation for that um host a whole host a uh, host a whole lot of meetings as well within the design community like we do design reviews and community calls and and all of this kind of stuff that just tries to get people in the in the spaces to, to communicate with each other and innovate together and and um, have the discussions that you know push us forward slowly. Um, hey Connor, how, how many how many time zones does that cover? Like when you have a call like that. <laughs> oh man, that's a great question. You know, like every time zone dot com is like my favorite um, uh, website to to help with that kind of stuff because there's like yeah a good seven eight nine from australia to the us to europe to people tune in from uh, nigeria sometimes so it's it's really fun from that aspect but it is quite tough to coordinate um all of those all of those time zones for sure and then uh and then yeah so what, once i actually finished my, my square crypto grant um i was offered the opportunity to join the square crypto team full-time as of uh, like first quarter of q1 q2 of this of this year um, it was like an opportunity that I, you know, couldn't really turn down, and uh, I was so so thankful for the opportunity to join the team because uh, the team is super talented, working on a lot of cool stuff. And um, my role now is to manage the grant program that I was initially a part of, um, as well as, as as a whole host of projects that are going on at, at, at Square Crypto as well. So I don't know if you want me to to go into a bit about like the grant program and, and Square Crypto in general? Or... I, I definitely do. First, I want to say congrats on that that new Appreciate role. It. Yeah, so tell yeah, us, appreciate. like, how how does that process work? How do you mm -hmm. um, even apply all those sorts of things? Yeah, so Square Crypto um, is, a, is a team um, that was established by Jack Dorsey, um, CEO of Square and Twitter. Uh, it's no secret that Jack is a big proponent of, of Bitcoin. And so in 2019, um, Square have, is, a, is a super successful company and have um, leveraged open source software to help them get to where they've got to. Um, 
Jack's a big believer in the need for a native currency for the internet and believes Bitcoin is probably the best opportunity to do that. And so he, much of his thinking was, well, how, how do we as Square give back to the open source community and Bitcoin community specifically? And the best way to do that is to pay people to do that, pay people to um, help push the Bitcoin ecosystem forward. So our team's made up of um, a few kind of more product uh, project manage focus people and a team of developers as well and we have um, what's called the the square crypto grant program and essentially we're currently funding around 25 designers and developers across 17 18 different countries wow. all working on bitcoin open source projects predominantly to help the ecosystem in the areas of user experience privacy security and scalability um and so it's something that we're really proud of because um it's not always easy or obvious how to fund um open source projects because there tend not to be much support for people contributing as people tend to contribute on a volunteer basis a lot of the time yeah um and so if, you know, going back to the narrative of there needing to be a, a, a native digital currency for the internet and wanting to give back to the open source community, um, this is kind of uh, what our, what our team, team is really focused on. And so we're always on the lookout for like people who have the talent and the kind of will to want to work on open source projects and, and move the space forward. Um, and then my team also works on uh, improving the developer experience of, of Bitcoin as well. So we work on something called the Lightning Development Kit, um, which is designed to be a tool for developers to be able to integrate Lightning features into their Bitcoin wallets um, in a slightly easier way that's a bit more composable and a bit more they can kind of choose the features they want. Oh. Um, and and integrate and customize it as they see as they see fit. So the Lightning Development Kit is also a really exciting project we're working on. Have you seen pretty big growth in adoption of Lightning Development Kit? Um, slowly but surely, yeah. We have seen um, some implementations done by Blue, the team at Blue Wallet. Oh. Um, so they've integrated the LDK and um, with with pretty good results um, and so they're building they're continuing to build on that as well and um, the team at Cash Up as well are doing some testing with the Lightning Development Kit as well and so yes yeah, slowly slowly but surely I think it's the time we're at a time now where we're kind of had a rebrand of our website and we're going through the process of improving our documentation so people can actually understand how to use the kit and uh, we'll be going through that process quite intensely over the next couple of months to really like help people you know integrate lightning into their into their wallet so we've well, already mentioned a couple wallets that i'm very fond of and and have yeah. uh breeze and blue wallet so <laughs> yeah exactly yeah um so yeah i think i think those are those are the main things and just to just to touch on a little bit more about the grant so we we fund different types of projects as well so we're funding btc pay server we fund different uh, lightning infrastructure projects as well. Um, we fund designers that are working in the Bitcoin design community. We fund uh, people working on Bitcoin core, more of the like protocol level stuff. Um, so it really does like range. It, there is quite a range of different things that we, we try to focus on. Um, but the, the, the kind of overarching theme is that none of it has its own kind of business model and so um all our grants are very much no strings attached kind of given you know given the given the guys the freedom to you know try and move the ecosystem as forward as best as best they can you know so yeah like you mentioned they normally would just do this potentially on a volunteer basis mm. and it's an open source project so it's not not, not like they're you know necessarily exactly making a ton of money from it so yeah exactly and ultimately i think we want to 
get to a place where funding is decentralized as well like square is a square crypto is a very large uh giver of grants but um there are also other organizations such as brink and okay coin and gemini and OpenSat and um, bitmex a lot of a lot of good um companies uh providing funding as well but it's not enough we still want to we still want more like we want 50 100 as many as you can you know um in keeping with that kind of decentralized ethos yeah well it's been amazing to watch the um the support that jack has given to the ecosystem in terms of square crypto and you know being all good with spinning that up and um copa for instance i think is what it's called and Mm -hmm. just you know protecting um the open source community from patent trolls let's just call them (laughs) Mm. yeah um and just developing support uh, for that even down to the um the b word event a couple months ago a few months ago that was incredible yeah yeah so yeah that was that was really good yeah yeah it's pretty awesome okay so then there's the hello bitcoin podcast uh or or series let's call it yeah yeah so yeah hello bitcoin is um is an open source educational initiative um that we started well that we kind of revamped early this year um and it's designed well we we believe bitcoin is for everyone um we believe that one of the biggest barriers to adoption is education and so we wanted to do something that would help the average user kind of understand why bitcoin is important i think there is tends to be a bit of an asymmetry in information with regards to people who are technologists or people who work in financial institutions or in monetary environments they tend to have an unfair advantage when it comes to learning about bitcoin just by the mere fact that they're in those um, environments and so the learning curve for the average beginner is or newbie is quite tough and so we wanted to deliver something that was um, of high quality but um, was also friendly and and allowed someone to kind of um, walk the the path of of learning about Bitcoin in an environment that was kind of friendly. Um, They can ask questions um, and they can kind of start their journey in a way that encourages them to to stay for the long haul. Um, And so we've done that through, at the moment, we've done it through YouTube videos um we have three videos out at the moment i featured in the first two and our video host mcgrashki was in video three um and we talk about um you know the, the first video is kind of like the why of bitcoin why bitcoin is for everyone and the second one is around more of it being a tool for human freedom and given some of that basis then we can kind of go into like how bitcoin actually works how does it enable you know human freedom and how does it help fight against inflation and X, Y, Z? So um, they're, they're, they're on YouTube. They're on our YouTube channel at Hello Bitcoin. And then in addition to that, we have like a community effort where we try to answer questions, whether it be through Twitter or we have our Discord server as well, where people are encouraged to, to come and ask questions, um, where one of our, what we call like Bitcoin guides will hopefully kind of, who are people who have been in around in the space and are super educated and can give you like very accurate accurate information you can come and ask questions in in that environment um because yeah i'm sure you know you know as as well as as i do like if you send someone to learn about bitcoin on twitter um (laughs) it, it could it could go many ways it could go many ways and uh some of those ways are can be pretty negative so yeah um I think we've been lacking an environment that's a bit more soft and a bit more, you know, um, a bit more friendly ultimately, you know. So um, that's that's the kind of idea behind Hello Get Bitcoin. Yeah, yeah. So episode one was the why, um, mm. and just really, I think it goes back to your ethos of, um, you know, why 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 not make 
monetary access open. <laughs> you know, if you want yeah. to um, join, you should be able to. Uh, yeah. That was a really impactful um, kind of takeaway for me of, of the kind of first video's mm -hmm. theme. Yeah, and I think as well, like in that first video, we kind of touched on it being like three points around it's a tool to save for the long term. So I think a lot of the people we speak to, you know, in the Western world um, will definitely experience it as a, as a long term savings vehicle. But beyond that, it's we hope it will become like a global currency for the world, which is like number two. And then number three is the idea that you're not too late in this, like people in 2017, like we, the 2017 class, like maybe we thought we were late and now the 2020 class think they're late, but in, in, rea in actual reality, everyone's super early. Like it's not even, we've not reached anywhere near the potential of where this kind of network can go. Um, so we really wanted to, to kind of drive home um, those, those points, especially in the first video. Yeah. It reminds me last uh, week I had on NVK, who's the CEO of uh, CoinKite, the, ma the makers of Cold Card, okay. Open Dime. Mm -hmm. And he mentioned yeah. it's still really early. We have 200 million maybe yeah. Bitcoin users. That means 8 billion yeah. people still need to, <laughs> to hop on. So, yeah, it's crazy to think when you think about it, right? It's, um, and it's, it's the kind of Parker Lewis thing of, it. I think it will be pretty much like gradually then suddenly, like it can happen like really quick. Um, especially, especially when maybe you're not, well, maybe when you work in the space, things are, are a bit slow, you kind of see gradual progression. But when you're, when you're not, like things can just, one day you're paying in fiat and the next you're paying in Bitcoin, right? Like it can happen that quick, so. Yeah, just ask El Salvador. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Yeah. Wait, wake it's up one day story, and yeah. Mc, McDonald's uh, is accepting lightning payments. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's crazy, right? It's absolutely crazy. Yeah. So then on Hello Bitcoin, video number two was all about. Yeah, so number two is about like it being a, a tool for human freedom. And so uh, much of the narrative in that video was around, say, your you know, a migrant worker um, working somewhere and you need to send money back home. Um, a lot of the time there are intermediaries that take huge portions of that transaction and uh, you're not able to optimize essentially what you can send back in addition to having um, monetary inflation in places like South America and Argentina and all of these places and hyperinflation. And so um, for people in, in these environments as well, um, they don't essentially have access to any financial services. And a lot of it comes down to not being able to provide like identification or not having the right documents and things of this nature. So you really do have a, have a tough time engaging economically a lot of the time. So that one was very much around like, yeah, now now you can have access to a monetary system that doesn't require you to pro to provide all of these arbitrary things, and you can save more of your money, and you can send more of your money back home. And th the reason the ability to save is important is because with the ability to save, you can now create generational wealth, and through generational wealth, you can prosper over time. You know, so it's this whole kind of, I guess, what safety Dean says with the low time preference and and things of that nature. You can kind of um provide a, a better life for you over the long term essentially you know so yeah and you have people like you know jack uh dorsey for instance he wrote that hyperinflation tweet right a couple days ago yeah, yeah. and professor steve hankey <laughs> comes out <Yeah>. with <laughs> more goodness yeah. on you know there's no hyperinflation even though you see these tweets he made you know a while back about some country where inflation was like at 100 percent and you're like, what? Yeah. what is it about these folks who just don't <laughs> get it? Yeah, and you'd think like, uh, I mean, Jack wouldn't tweet something like just like that out of the blue. I mean, Square is in a very good p position to understand the price changes of things <laughs> given they like intermediate hundreds of thousands of transactions every year. So I'm pretty sure like it's backed up by very, very solid data as well, but yeah. Yeah, 
no doubt that a payments provider company might be able to <laughs> mine that data, right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. Um, so, so, yeah. so then episode three, um, which was uh, like all of them are masterful, but this was an incredible uh, intro to like how Bitcoin works. Yeah. Yeah. So um, this this episode, uh, shout out to McGraskey, who was the video host. She's done an amazing job. Um, very much around, um, yeah, the, the trying to go into a bit more of the technical side of, of Bitcoin. Ultimately, like we can talk about it being a tool for human freedom and the why, but we'd be doing like a disservice if we didn't at least try and touch on some of the the elements of Bitcoin. So the idea that people should discard the idea of a coin and that Bitcoin is actually a public ledger where people have private and public keys and to be able to unlock the value sitting in a specific transaction in the public ledger you need to have a private key and um and the idea of the chain being like immutable but being secured by this network of miners and um the rules being validated by node operators and things of this nature it's, it is a lot to kind of to kind of grasp and it's a video that took us probably like close to five six months to get to completion because we um definitely understood the need for like illustrations and good animations so yeah like there's a lot of shout outs for this video because um one like matt who who writes the scripts for us and is the founder um Carolee, who helps with video editing and mcgraski who obviously did the video hosting and people from the design community like Stephen Delorme who helped kind of lead that effort as well um, I'm forgetting someone um, you know who you are sorry I, I, I forgot, <laughs> I forgot, you know but you know who you are shout out to shout out, yeah I mean shout out to everyone it was very much a, like a collaborative effort um, so um, yeah really pre pleased with the outcome and, and I, well, I'm hoping it's something that can last the test of time um, and for us it's just about trying to get the videos out there like none of us at the moment have experience with growth hacking so we want our views we want our videos to have millions of views if we're honest with you and we want them to be shared all over the planet so we're hoping we can do some internationalization efforts to have our videos translated into spanish and french and mandarin and you name it so um but delivered by people in, in those communities so that would just be like one of the next steps for us anyway yeah it's it's incredible um the illustrations first and foremost like the the way that uh, uh mugakshi talked about um just mining in general and i know the script yeah. was written and that sort of thing but the delivery was incredible because uh, i think i've shared it now with a few people because i keep hearing what how does mining like what is mining you know and yeah so yeah um it's a it's a great primer on that yeah yeah thank you and yeah i mean the next video is um we're going to talk about the environmental impact of bitcoin which is a uh, obviously a very hot topic um so yeah look, look out for that one i'm sure i'm sure you enjoy that as well and then the video after that is going to be talking about bitcoin versus kind of altcoins so our next two videos are, are, are walking on the, the line of um it'll go moving into an area that's slightly controversial so uh we're, we're challenged with trying to make that like friendly and uh and accessible without you know kind of conjuring up too much controversy so oh oh don't worry if you're going into these t those two areas someone will have some opinion right <laughs> yeah of course yeah and rightly so like it's uh we're, we're just um we're just putting forward what we think to be be the truth of the matter but in a way that's you know consumable but no doubt there will be some people who have <laughs> opinions well i think what's cool too for you guys is i notice on your website that you make it um available for people to actually submit hey what should the next videos be about so you're very much channeling yeah. the open source ethos yeah exactly yeah we're we're, we're 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 like interested in hearing like what questions people have what what video content people would like us to to try and produce um and yeah we're just just slowly trying to trying to grow out this community like 
maybe like well the goal is to ha- for us to have presence in in everywhere everywhere but have it native to to people in that community as well that's great that's great yeah so everyone uh, if you're still with us to this point make sure you go check out hello bitcoin <laughs> yeah yeah hit us up on on twitter or on twitter um twitter and probably youtube is our main our main places at the minute and join our discord server if you've got like friends who are newbies and want to ask questions or yourself you want to ask questions as well so awesome so connor you've got this really unique i think uh viewpoint on bitcoin um you know because you're in it (laughs) uh you you really are the my question is what what are you most excited about let's say over the next two to five years um and do you have any ideas of what might happen that like people maybe aren't expecting yet um over the next few years with bitcoin yeah that's a good question um I think what I'm most excited about actually having joined the Square Crypto team is actually the, the Lightning Network, to be honest. Um, in my short time, like learning about Lightning Network, I've realized there's so much going on. And this is when you realize, you know, for Bitcoin to ultimately ultimately, ultimately succeed, um, it has succeeded to a certain extent already. But to get to the next level, we need Bitcoin to become a medium of exchange. And the only way to do that is through, well, the best way we know to do that at the moment is through the Lightning Network. And um, it's just growing at like a a ridiculous pace. And the innovation you see is just like, it's, it's, it's unbelievable. So I'm really bullish on the Lightning Network over the, over the next two to four years, especially with regards to like non-custodial usage. Like we have a lot of custodial Lightning usage through strike and uh and and packs for and, and other organizations but yeah. um non-custodial is still kind of on its way um at least a non-custodial experience that everyone can can use comfortably yeah you can just open a wallet and and we're good to go so that's that's probably what i'm most bullish about because I, i've kind of being behind the scenes i'm seeing everything that's being worked on and i'm in my head i'm trying to connect the dots and some of the dots I'm connecting, I'm like, oh wow, okay, if that if that does happen, then that opens up a lot of doors for X, Y, Z. So yeah. I definitely look forward to Bitcoin becoming like a medium of exchange that is um, still adhering to to the many of the principles that make Bitcoin Bitcoin strong. Yeah, kind of the as trustless as possible nature. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. For people who are watching this and they just heard you say custodial, like in, in non-custodial, could you just give a short primer on what's the difference between that, those two things? Yeah, yeah, sure. So um, with custodial Bitcoin, um, a third party or an intermediary is essentially in charge of your private keys. And your private keys are what enable you to basically unlock transactions and send funds to another person or another entity, whatever it might be. So you kind of outsource the management and the security of those private keys to another institution. Some people listening to this call might have bought Bitcoin on an exchange. And so it might be an exchange or a Bitcoin bank, for, for lack of a better term, that is holding your your private keys whereas what we try to encourage um so in in that scenario one could argue you're not you don't own the bitcoin we have this saying not your keys not your coins yes so if you don't have the keys to your bitcoin then you don't truly own your bitcoin and that's where a custodial um that's what is encapsulated in the custodial relationship whereas non-custodial is essentially the complete opposite so you're in charge of your private keys um no one can um you're in charge of your private keys you're in charge of securing them um and ultimately this is what enables the unconfiscatability of bitcoin and the kind of censorship resistance of, of bitcoin as well because you don't have anyone that can tell you that you can't send your money to wherever you want 
Um, and so it's really important for people to learn how to um, custody their own coins because the network only increases in strength when we have more people who can manage their own keys because there is there are a lot of risks when you choose to opt to allow custodians to manage your keys um, such as you know security hacks and theft and all of these kind of things whereas if you have a distrib distributed network with different people and nodes and everyone holding their own keys it makes uh, such attacks a lot a lot uh, less easy so it's really like important that people learn to to custody their own coins yeah yeah and and that was part of your uh i guess work with breeze uh and and phoenix on the backing up private keys in the cloud uh are those custodial services would you say um so no so they the, the the model they use is to do automatic backups um to your cloud provider so whether it be um gmail or, or encrypted backups i should say to your cloud provider whether it be google drive or, or icloud and so you're still in charge of your keys um it's just i guess deemed less secure to have someone like write them down on a piece of paper and store them somewhere because there's um the physical risks that come with such such things water fire like you name it just general loss the the general genu general um negligence so um it's just a security model that um is optimized for more like low value transactions and when you're like onboarding someone for the first time but those scenarios you're in fully in charge of like your funds and how you send them and stuff like that so those would be considered um non-custodial as well okay great yeah i thought that but then i you know was listening to you uh describe custodial and non-custodial and i thought okay i need to just make sure <laughs> yeah yeah and it, uh, it, as far as i remember in those well in those wallets you have the um option to write down your recovery phrase or yes yeah, I like to use the term recovery phrase, but in wallets you might see it as recovery seed or mnemonic seed, or but recovery phrase is the, my preferred terminology, um, and usually it's baked somewhere in the setting somewhere. But once you go to reveal those those words, it will usually give you a warning that like this is kind of an unsafe thing to do, and will deem that pri that recovery fr recovery phrase now compromised. So um, it's just something something to be aware of, yeah. Yeah. Okay, and then just a little bit deeper, maybe for for people who are watching, um, who aren't as familiar with Bitcoin yet, what is it specifically mm -hmm. the uh, potential use cases of Lightning that make you excited over the next few years? Yeah. So. Um, so firstly, I guess like Lightning is what's going to enable us to scale to to you know, hundreds of thousands of transactions per second. Like currently Bitcoin only allows for, I don't know, like 10 transactions per second, which is obviously not, it's not going to be able to, everyone is not essentially going to be able to use it. Um, and so Latin enables, enables us to scale Bitcoin to all of these different use cases. Um, some of the things that are exciting are um, being able to like stream sats for or, or stream bitcoin for a service like whether it be like podcasting so this idea of kind of like a, a value for value business model where like i pay a content creator directly um based on how much of the content i'm consuming um and so because lightning enables like really small micro payments um, this is a use case that like we might see more often um, so whether it be podcasting or music or other types of video or other types of content that could be really exciting and why that's exciting is because it brings the supporter and the content creator closer together without the need of a middleman who's kind of taking fees out unnecessarily so you could have a kid in rural Nigeria um, really talented at playing some type of instrument who could be um, 
you know, streamed Sats um, doing a, a, he could be doing a live stream in rural Nigeria and someone in um, Seattle, USA could be listen, listening to that and, you know, stream Sats directly to that, that person, which as far as I'm aware, is not super easy to do right now, right? Mm -hmm. So it's just the, it's just this idea of it bringing people like c closer together, you know, on, on, the things that they care about and the things that they're interested in in the most so that's definitely that's definitely something that's super interesting bringing content creators closer to their supporters yeah because things like the music industry the film industry other creative industries there's always been this middleman who takes a chunk out of the performer's like the wallet essentially right <laughs> and it's yeah, usually a bigger exactly. chunk yeah Exactly. I'm also looking forward to a time where I'm traveling. I've been doing quite a lot of traveling this year, year funny enough, even though we've had this pandemic and stuff, like I've been blessed enough to be able to go to a few countries. I'm looking forward to the day where I don't have to convert a currency. <laughs> I can just like load up my Bitcoin wallet and just go wherever and just pay. For, I know we're like very, very long way away from that. Um, but maybe not so much. Like maybe if I go to El Salvador, like I, I can get that experience. I don't have to, I can just load up my wallet with sats and off I go to El Salvador and we're all good. Don't have to worry about exchanging money, different currencies here and there. So I'm looking forward to be able to, to do and doing a bit of that as well. Yeah. Yeah. I think, I really do think stream. I, I think it was Elizabeth Stark who was talking about streaming sats a few years ago and mm. that just impacted me. Uh, I know that you could do it like a couple of years ago, but it was like, mm -hmm. it's, it's accelerated like crazy. I think mm -hmm. this year. Yeah. So, you know, breeze, yeah. um, fountain, these are apps where you can put your podcast Sphinx and, chat, Sphinx chat. Yeah. Sphinx chat. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So very, very cool services. Well, I mean, maybe to, to land the plane here, Connor, um, when you what what are some you're very much about people um onboarding and having a great experience mm -hmm. so what are some recommendations you would make uh, just based on your specific expertise to bitcoiners who have friends and family who are asking about it um what are some kind of hacks that uh hey i'm a bitcoiner my friends and family aren't getting it yeah i need help yeah that's a good one so <laughs> send them send them the hello bitcoin videos <laughs> one <laughs> yeah send them the hello bitcoin videos and then two is um what i've been doing more recently is just getting them to experience it so get them to download moon wallet um send them some sats and then ask them was that easier than opening a bank account mm. And see what and see what they say. Ninety nine point nine percent of the time, they're gonna say that was easier than opening a bank account <laughs> <laughs> because opening a bank account, like I guess I've not done it for a while, like, but it, it can take anywhere from a week to two weeks, and transferring money from a bank account in one country to a bank account in another country your money gets lost in the ether and you don't know where it is and it can take days, weeks, months. So just get them to experience it. And like, sometimes the light bulb gets turned on that way as well. I've done that to multiple people and they, and they, they're like, Oh, that was, that was, that was so easy. Like we're sending and receiving payments in like a 30 second time window. And I didn't have to give my ID and I didn't, have to ask for permission and I didn't have to give up my email and I didn't have to do this that and the other and so um sometimes that's the only way to to get people to 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 understand is to get them to experience it and the reason I say something like a moon or a breeze or a, or a phoenix is because you get the instant transactions um of a, 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 a wallet that focuses on maybe layer one bitcoin not so much because of the long confirmation times, but I'll definitely get them to experience, give them that lightning experience and uh, they'll get it. That's awesome. Well, Connor, it's been a, a huge pleasure having you on today, hearing about your work. For, appreciate it. Oh yeah. Appreciate your time. Uh, for people who, you know, are 
joining at the end, maybe they miss some of the references of where to find you um, and all of your work. Yeah, um, I guess firstly, like, hello, Bitcoin. Uh, I want to wanna say that you can visit the website, hello, bitco.in. Um, find us on, on the Twitter as well, hello, Bitcoin. Um, also join our Discord channel as well if you're like a new person and you want to learn about Bitcoin, come and ask some questions. Um, and then me personally, yeah, I guess like Twitter is where I'm most active with regards to Bitcoin stuff. So Connor Ocus on Twitter. Um, DMs are open to, to, to all things Bitcoin really. So uh, feel free to, to hit me up there as well. Awesome. All right. Well, thanks so much for joining us today, Connor. Okay. Thanks for having me. You got it. So yeah, you know, just talking with a guy who's going to be at Adopting Bitcoin on several of the panels on the developer track. And so he's going to actually talk about Lightning Development Kit, LDK, uh, next month there in uh, San Salvador. And it's just super exciting to hear him talk specifically about how do you make design, the design of Bitcoin something that more and more people can use the, the user experience bridging that gap and he is uh, doing some awesome stuff so i was super pumped to have him on on the show um if you loved it or even liked it <laughs> give me a thumbs up comment like subscribe and also uh, we'll be very soon on all of the different podcast stores including the value for value uh, stores as well but uh uh, same thing, Connor, you know, is awesome. Make sure you go check out his stuff. Give him likes. <laughs> Subscribe to Hello Bitcoin. And uh, we'll see you next time. Keep changing the tide toward greater freedom and prosperity.